tell me about the strengths and weaknesses of America today from your perspective. I think the dog was a big weakness. I'm a, I'm a big believer in self-awareness. If you take two employees and one is from a part of Eastern Europe where their only goal is defending themselves and it's a win or lose, I'll take the person with more nuance over that who can say, hey, you know what, I, get, I made a mistake and I'm learning from it. I don't think a country with 300 million people does a lot of self-awareness, especially in its position. And thinking will always be the best because if you're a limited version of history, it's not a very good way to be successful. Shaking things up and attracting things is a good way to be successful. So that's, I think that's a serious weakness. I think that people in much of the West have been kind of spoiled. I don't think that's what builds successful societies. And for the first time ever, you have competition. Steve Bannon was the Trump advisor who said, we hollowed out the middle class in the United States to build one in Asia. As if Asia does not deserve to have a middle class, go and eat your rice and accept your $1 a day. That's the way that people think it should be. I mean, let's be honest. That's what people, you know, when the Iraq war happened, everyone's like, oh, this is terrible. And I said, yeah, wait, if gas becomes, you know, $6 a gallon, they'll say, hey, what other countries can we invade? Because I need cheaper gas. Nobody cares. And so... I just think that this kind of detachment from reality that other countries aren't going to become more successful. You're see, I mean, we had 50 some percent extreme poverty in 1960. It went down to 8% before the pandemic. Other people are getting wealthy. There are going to be other places to go. And so a guy like me, I have two American employees and they don't live in the U S I've gone where I'm treated best and I found the best talent. And oftentimes it's, it's more affordable. And so that means that's 60 people who I might have hired in the U.S. in a different life who aren't being hired there. What are the strengths? The U.S. is an entrepreneurial culture. My fear with that, and, and people say even in Canada, we leave Canada to go to the U.S. because the, Canada cuts down the tall trees. You do hear that in some Western cultures. That's why you see entrepreneurs go to the U.S. My challenge with that is it's such a small percentage of the population. And the other population is increasingly saying, we don't want to work. I go on LinkedIn. I mean, it's just like, it's like every reason to not work. And that's kind of being accepted. And I don't know how you have 2% of the population that drives an uncooperative 90, 98% and you get a lot of stuff, stuff done. I, j I just don't know how it works. So there is a sense of entrepreneurship. And maybe there's something I'm missing. But I just don't think that they're leaders in freedom anymore. I think they're leaders in the brand called freedom. Right, and you look at all the politicians. It's just—it's such a fungible concept. Freedom. We're, we have freedom. What does that mean? Nobody can tell you. <laughs> and that, to me, is when you realize. Again, if I told an employee, define what you just said. Some corporate employee, like, D tell me what that means, and they can't. That means you don't have it. So I think that besides that entrepreneurial spirit, which will increasingly be at odds with people who don't want to work, I don't know what else there is. Other than your own personal issues, yeah, I just like it here. Okay, would you like it somewhere else?